Hey coffee people! I'm going to be doing a series of brew videos using brew recipes and techniques by other people who uh, know what they're doing. I don't often brew at home because I'm either traveling a lot or I like to go to the cafes around Denver um, to see my friends and support their, their businesses and such. But right now, the city of Denver and the state of Colorado have issued a stay at home order. So some cafes are still open, but they're also really just urging everybody to stay at home as much as possible. So I figured this is a good time to experiment with some different brew methods. Today, I'm gonna to be using James Hoffman's V60 technique. I don't have a scale, so we're gonna be uh, kind of improvising here a little bit. I've watched the video a couple of times, so I feel like I have a good kind of understanding of, of how it goes, how quickly he pours and how like the volume of, of beans rather than the weight because I don't, again, have a scale. These are the notes that I wrote. I'll be using Amethyst Coffee's February House Blend. It's a coffee that I know very well because I go to Amethyst a lot. So I'll know if I hit, if I get it right or if I totally mess it up. <laughs> so luckily I have a two cup V60 like James was using. Um, I have the plastic one and I believe I have the same filters as well. He, uh, in the video, it says it's the number two, which is what I have. So hopefully that'll make it easy to gauge the volumes that he was using and the, um, like the speed at which he was pouring the water. I'll be using this Virtuoso Plus grinder, this Bonavita kettle, here's my brewing equipment, and then of course my Umashiso spoon to stir. So I start by pre-wetting my filter, which heats up the brewer. Then I put in my coffee grinds. James's video looked like it was between a third and a half of the way full, so I tried to get there as well. And then I make a little divot in the middle with the of the coffee bed and get ready for the bloom. So I wanted to pour about 60 grams in, trying to eyeball it, and then James does a swirl to evenly wet the uh, brew bed and then wait 30 seconds to 45 seconds as it blooms. And then we get to start pouring. About 60% of the water in the next 30 seconds up to the top. And then we do the rest uh, of the, the water in the next 30 seconds. So it's a little bit of a slower pour there. And then we stir the coffee one way. I'm using my umashiso spoon and a little stir the other way and done. Then we wait for it to drain a little bit, give it a little shake, and then you wait for the drawdown. the first thing that I'm noticing is that the brew bed is not flat and there are also pieces around the outside. Um, the brew bed actually, it kind of has like a donut shape in the middle and then there's a bunch of grinds around the outside. So that kind of tells me that I didn't do a good job of agitating the, the coffee bed while I was pouring the water in. I was really focused on the time rather than actually if, um, how my pour was affecting the brew bed. Um, so next time I would focus more on how the coffee is being agitated rather than the, like, rather than counting to 30 in my head. Um, yeah. Right? I don't know. The other thing that I realized is that when I was done with the brew, I had it pretty much right up to right under the 500 milliliter mark, which for not having a scale is pr pretty good. Uh, I was aiming to get 500 grams or 500 milliliters of water, and I got pretty close to that. So I feel good about that. Actually pretty happy. It smells really great. And the color is, I mean, it looks well extracted. I don't have a TDS meter, so I can't measure the exact extraction or anything. Mm -hmm. That's really fruity, really sweet. Um, that's a really great cup of coffee. Yum. Uh, that's really great. Yeah, this brew method is great, especially without a scale. If you can gauge the, the volume of coffee and the volume of water, yeah, it works. <laughs> 